What is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast, weekly leveling up episode. And today I want to talk to you guys about pain, pain and suffering, and how they can become power and turn into power within your life, within your overall business, um, utilizing these painful moments, these, these moments that most run from, that most do everything they possibly can to avoid, and how you can utilize these to go out there and continue to grow, continue to expand, continue to level up on your overall success journey. Now, real quick, before we jump into this, make sure to check out gsdmode.com. We can easily, uh, easily link and access to all uh, uh, future podcasts, episodes, as well as access a bunch of other free resources, trainings. Right now, I've got a free uh, three-plus-hour online masterclass taking place about how to go out there and shift and pivot during these changing times. So make sure to check out gsdmode.com. All right, let's jump back into it. And again, we are talking about pain and suffering and how to turn and utilize these painful in the moment times into creating massive amounts of power in our overall lives, our overall businesses, and so forth. So the first thing is to make sure that you are not avoiding pain and suffering like the vast majority of humanity. I get it sucks. You know, pain is pain for a reason, man. It, 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 it's not fun. I'm not a sadistic human being. It's not something that I you know, choose or want to, at least on a conscious level of, of, or in the awareness that I have of trying to inflict pain, you know, inside my own life. But the reality is, is pain and suffering are going to happen. You know, God does not uh, uh, reserve painful moments or moments of suffering just for a select few of human beings. Like we all are going to experience different elements of pain and suffering throughout our personal lives, throughout our businesses. It is inevitable. But these moments are what forge us into, you know, the man and women that we become and allow us to metamorphosize, if you will, into a better version of ourselves. You know, if I were to reflect on my overall, you know, 17 plus year business career, real estate career, you know, along with my overall success journey and, and reflecting back on like, what, what are the best parts, you know? And, and I can tell you this, as I reflect deeply and I spend a lot of time in reflection, it is not the awards, it is not the accolades, you know, it's not, uh, uh, you know, the, the, I guess, awareness of, of people getting to know your name in an industry. It's not the money. It's, I mean, all those things, I'm not dismissing those things and acting and I don't want to come across as, you know, I'm not, don't enjoy some of those things. I'm not proud of some of those things, but they are not even close to being the best elements um, are the best part of this success journey. By far the best part of this, at least for me internally, has been the, the level of confidence, the level of certainty uh, that has been gained over overcoming all of these different seasons of adversity that I had to bust through to get to that new level. Because look, as you're growing and as you're expanding, you're going to have new problems. When I get most fearful in any element of my, let's just say with my business, where I get most fearful is when I'm not experiencing a current problem, when I'm not experiencing a current pain and so forth. That shows me that I'm not growing, that I'm not expanding, that I'm not leveling up, um, and that eventually I'm going to experience some pain, a, di a different kind of pain from allowing myself to operate in mediocrity. Because I truly, truly believe with every fiber of my being that in life, we are either growing or we are decaying. That there is no such thing as maintenance mode. You are either on the growth trajectory to continue to grow and expand. The second you stop growing is the second you enter decay. And it may appear for a period of time in your business or your life that things are staying mediocre, that they're staying you know, in maintenance mode, if you will. But I can promise you from personal experience, there will be that moment where things flip, things turn around, things start to go to shit in your life. Um, and, and that's not what we want. So when I get most concerned is when I'm not experiencing times of, of pain, times of adversity and so forth. So my relationship with it, I've learned to change my relationship with it over the years. So, so again, initially it was like, oh man, these are headaches. Why, why am I experiencing this? Yeah, I was being a victim, man. I was being a loser. I, I wasn't. A, a, I didn't have the right mental perspective, the right mental philosophy to approach these things in the right way. And I was doing whatever I could to avoid these painful situations, these these you know times of suffering and so forth. Where, and again, I'm not trying to sit there and, and come across wrong as like I'm just chasing pain. I'm chasing suffering, but I look at it as a signal. Right. So as I'm growing, as I'm expanding, I'm going to have new headaches. I'm going to have new challenges, new things come up, new problems come up that I haven't experienced before, because if I'm experiencing the same problems over and over and over, you know, that means my level of action hasn't hasn't rised, you know, um, and, and I haven't grown from those moments. If I'm experiencing the same problems over and over and over, you know, I haven't overcome uh, uh, whatever that current thing is in my life. 
to go out there and be able to grow and expand to handle that problem. So I'm no longer suffering from that problem. But then as soon as that problem is solved, boom, I'm going to have another problem. I'm going to have something new that comes up, something you know different that comes up. You know, start off with just you know problems in one business. Now they have multiple businesses. It's you know, then I had to learn how to, on how to sit there and manage problems and put out fires in multiple different businesses at once. I had to go out there and learn how to expand my overall capacity, over expand my you know bandwidth, if you will. You know, and so forth. So, so much of this has to do with your perspective. Recently, I created one of these leveling ups on our ability to manage and handle stress. And, and stress is really, you know, you've got to look at it in that kind of same perspective of not looking at this as a negative, looking at this as a positive, dealing, real, dealing in realities, just understanding that this is a natural part of business, a natural part of life. As we are growing, as we are expanding, it's going to happen. Why am I going to run through something or run from something, try to avoid something that is going to be a natural occurrence on my group, different growth cycles, you know, and so forth. All right, so during times of pain, uh, uh, how, how do you go out there and overcome those? How do you create proactive plans? At least through my own experience, you know, here's what I've come up with that, that works for me. All right, so the first thing is to identify and have awareness of it. So, really, you know, whatever that is, like, don't, don't just, okay, I'm having some painful moments. I just, oh, I need a break. Now, like taking a break, it, it, that's not solving that problem. That's just me sticking my head in the sand, you know, and so forth. Let me identify let me have awareness and, and truly identify what is that core thing that is creating that painful time that I'm experiencing. And I've had a lot of these for different reasons. I've had pain of, of, of you know, just the hours that I have to work and, and, you know, the pain of having to figure out delegation. I've had financial pain. I've had, you know, um, uh, pain. I mean, so many, just like all of us, we've had so many different you know, types of pain in our, in our world. But first, getting very clear on, okay, what is creating the pain and, and identifying that. Then the second thing is once we identify what it is that that is that is we're experiencing the pain, then reflecting and identifying what has then led to the creation of that pain, right? Because we might be okay. Well, let's just say as an example, um, uh, I've got lack of cash flow coming in my business, and the pain right now is because. I don't have enough cash to go out there and, and continue to grow my business or even sustain the current business that I have. You know, as an example, I just heard last night in a podcast that 20% of all companies in the S&P 500 here in the United States, so these are 20% of the largest uh, of 500 companies inside the United States can't even right now currently make their interest payments on the debt that they have because when there's this massive debt bubble. So, so you know, like may, maybe we're experiencing a time like that. Okay, well, I need to identify, okay, like that is the core issue. Well, then from there, let me reflect deeply on what led to that issue coming up in the first place. You know, what, what did I do? How was I responsible from this? Maybe I started to, you know, lack the consistency that, that I've had, um, uh, you know, in these certain elements of, of that thing. Um, you know, maybe it's, oh, I didn't, you know, structure my team in the right way and build out the right team. Like, you know, what is going on in the business and then how am I responsible? What specifically led? So I'm going to really go through, okay, the pain we're experiencing now and once I've identified that and then to the time before, like when things were good, right? And, and, and maybe, okay, business was growing, cash flow was growing month over month. You know, things were on that upward trajectory. Life was amazing. Like I need to get myself back to there. Okay, well, what was going on at that time? What exactly what was I doing at that time? Then what changed? What became different that led me to where I'm currently at, right? So then now that we've identified what the thing is, and then we've reflected and been able to identify the thing or things that have led to the current pain that we're experiencing, um, that then allows us to go out there and identify now the third part of this is what is that proactive plan, that proactive strategy to, to go out there and turn this shit around? You know, like, what do I need to do to turn things around and get me back to where I need to go? Um, but when doing this deep reflection, you know, the other element of this is this allows us to, you know, not only identify the right plan and the right strategy to overcome and solve the current issue that we're experiencing that we're in, but hopefully, and mo most importantly, um, it allows us to learn from it so we don't repeat that same behavior and that same mistake. You know, and I, I'm the first person that will admit, man, I've made so many mistakes. I'm a human being. I'm a flawed human being. I've made so many mistakes. I continue to make mistakes. I'm, I'm far from perfect. I'm just trying to get a little bit better, you know, each and every day, each and every week, each and every month, each and every year, make fewer mistakes 
make less of the same mistakes. And sometimes, man, I, 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 learning lessons can be harder for certain people and in certain times and on certain things. You know, sometimes I've replicated the same behavior, the same mistakes. You know, it's like, okay, I'll solve it in that time frame, And then somehow I let myself get back to my old behaviors, my old ways, you know, and then boom, put myself back in that same position. So sometimes for me, at least, you know, um, uh, you know, I've experienced the, the, the same or similar pains for the same reasons because I didn't truly learn the lesson. You know, so this is why, like, and, and now today, it's like, okay, I want to learn from these lessons on such a deep way so that I don't repeat those same mistakes, those same, you know, uh, uh, you know, whatever that led to those things. So then once this is solved, at least in that area, it is truly solved. And, and now I can focus time on focusing on new, solving new pains and, you know, new things that, that um, you know, are, are bringing me to the next, you know, capacity, you know, and so forth in life. All right, so then the last element here um, is, and, and this is, you know, take this however you will. Some of you might agree with this. Some of you might disagree with this. I can just speak to, to what I found to, to serve me and, and work for me. Um, but what I found to be really helpful, uh, we just kind of went through, you know, the tactical things to identify, have that awareness, um, uh, uh, what led to it, to go out there and proactively solve it and so forth. But the fourth thing, you know, I found to be equally as important as all of this uh, in order to stay in that proactive standpoint and also to not go set limiting beliefs that don't need to be there, um, um, you know, and so forth is to never continually beat yourself up on mistakes of the past. You know, I look at this as, okay, that mistake happened. I'm not going to, I'm not going to continue. If I continue to self-sabotage myself over and over and over, you know, maybe I get myself into debt, you know, um, I'm in, in bad debt, unmanageable debt. And I've been there. I've lost it all, put myself into, you know, hundred thousand dollars of business credit card debt. It took me 18 months to climb out of that hole. Well, if every single day, once I, you know, once I identified what the problem was, once I identified what the problems or the things were that led to that, once I identified the plan to get me out of that hole, well, then from there, and it took me 18 months to get out of that mess. Well, if every single day I woke up and I started self-sabotaging myself, oh, I'm such a loser. I put myself in this bad situation. I can't believe that I did this. And I'm just ragging on myself each and every single day. Dude, that's going to bring me down. That's not going to give me the focus and the energy and, and you know, the, the necessary you know, things and tools and so forth that I need to overcome this. So once I, once I make awareness of this, you know, and I'm, I'm committed to overcoming this situation, I'm committed to the growth process, you know, to overcome, you know, the, this, you know, portion of, of or whatever this thing is, you know, then from there, I'm, I'm reflecting on it just to learn and grow from it. I'm no longer reflecting on it. And I force myself to do this. I'm no longer reflecting on it to self-sabotage and beat myself up, you know, because now I'm, I'm, I'm like that person uh, that, that made that mistake is now dead. Right. Like, like meaning I've grown and expanded. I've adopted the new habits, the new rituals, the new behaviors. I've, I've done that. I've become somebody different from from, um, uh, you know, having this new painful situation. I've had to become somebody different to get out of this painful situation, to solve that current situation that I'm in. You know, again, that, that metamorphosis process, like a, a caterpillar metamorphosized into a butterfly. It is no longer a caterpillar. Yeah, right. It is now something different. Um, and I found it to not serve me, not support me, not help me in any single way. You know, it's, it's like uh, yesterday I come home and I've got a, a puppy and, you know, my puppy chewed up one of my kids toys and, and just destroyed it. Well, you know, I'm going to go punish my dog, teach him those lessons. So, you know, uh, uh, he behaves differently, behaves better, you know, and, and hopefully doesn't, you know, continue down that path. Now my dog goes, you know, lays on his pad, keep him there for, I don't know, 10 minutes until his little puppy eyes are too cute. And I have to cave in and, you know, whatever. Um, um, and he might feel bad for a minute, but then after that, he is never thinking of that damn thing again. You know, he's just on with his life. He is never thinking about that damn thing again. You know, like, like human beings are the only species that continue to beat ourselves up over and over and over for some bullshit, stupid mistake that we made a year ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you know, whatever. Now, if you haven't, proactively done the things to solve that problem, well, then maybe you deserve that, that, you know, continue beat up of yourself, you know, but as long as you, you've owned it, you've identified what it is, the true, the true cause of it, you've identified what led you, uh, the true causes that led you to the situation that you're in. You have that proactive plan to get you from where you're current at, the current situation that you're in right now, pain to the current situation or the, the pleasurable situation that you want to be in. So out of that painful situation, um, and now you're taking proactive daily action steps 
to, to become again, to, to create a better situation, to overcome that adversity, to become better, to become more and, and so forth. Then from there, like there's no need for me to go out there and continue to beat myself up and up and up and over again. Cause through this process, again, we become so somebody so different, you know, it, it, like I remember when I first started my success journey, you know, there are so many things that were on my vision board and so many things that, you know, I, I'd have on there that, you know, now today, and I'm not saying they're shallow because, you know, uh, uh, like in a way of judgment for, you know, some people like flashy cars and certain things, you know, um, um, and I used to really want, you know, all of those things, not that I haven't, you know, had some nice cars, not that I don't still today have some, you know, nice vehicles, or at least that I, you know, to me, they're nice. Um, um, however, a lot of those things when I started my journey, because in order to get to the level of success to where I could then go out there and have all those things that I wanted to have I, when I first started this journey, you know, I became somebody so different through this overall process. I metamorphosized into somebody so different that those things that I used to want, that I used to think I, I craved and desired, you know, were no longer important to me. You know, like I do, I don't care about, you know, so many of the things I used to, to truly want and, and the things that, you know, I, I, it fueled me to start the success journey because again, the, the person that I became through overcoming adversity, through overcoming this pain, overcoming suffering and so forth, you know, uh, uh, forced me to forging into somebody new, to for, forging into somebody different, to metamorphosize into a different human being that was uh, capable of making those goals a reality. Well, then my values change. What was important to me? What is important to me? All of that stuff, you know, changes and can change over time. Maybe not for everybody, but it definitely, you know, definitely has for me. And I truly believe, you know, um, uh, in, in order to, you know, become that successful person we want to become. So let's just say, you know, a, a boy's journey to becoming a man. You know, now there, there are, uh, uh, and I know that there's, you know, women watching this too. So I'm not trying to, you know, uh, uh, make this just about, you know, men. I'm just using this as, as an analogy and example. Um, but there is a lot of adult grown ass little boys out there, you know, right. That haven't truly become men that haven't allowed themselves to go through the pain and the suffering, you know, and so forth that it takes to become, you know, a, a, a true man, at least and, and, and maybe that was a dumb analogy, you know, to utilize, you know, and so forth. And that's just my personal belief. Um, um, but man, that, that, that pain, that suffering, that's what makes the success also so damn sweet. You know, it's like, I look at like Mount Everest and, and, you know, people are going out there and hiking Mount Everest and you get to the top and you finally reach the top and you're taking the pictures, you're doing the selfies, you know, and so forth. Yeah. You could just go, you know, get a helicopter go to the top, jump out and pop a selfie, you know, right. But like, why aren't, I mean, maybe some people do that, but you know, at least the pictures that I see of Mount Everest and so forth, you know, uh, uh, people aren't doing that. And, and it, it, it's, it's not, and I'm, I'm assuming that if you did do that, that view is going to be near as nice, near as sweet. Cause you didn't have to go step by step through all the pain to get to the top of that mountain, to conquer that mountain. It is that, that pain that you have to push through to get to the top that makes those, you know, those moments and that view so damn amazing and so damn sweet because of the adversity, the pain, the suffering that you had to push through. And as you overcome these, these painful moments, these, these moments of adversity, you start to gain so much more self-confidence, so much more internal certainty. Look, self-confidence um, um, is just your own reputation with yourself. So whether you want to call it self-confidence or self-worth, this is just your reputation with yourself. It's all that it is. So if you want to have more self-confidence, if you want to have a higher self-personal worth, it is about then honoring your own commitments, showing yourself that you are capable, showing yourself that you are possible. And the more that you knock these things out, then boom, you get you get kind of that little stimulation, a little upper, you know, right? Like you, you raise up a notch in your own personal self-worth and your own self-confidence. So then over time, you know, while, while at least for me, you know, I still do everything I can to be humble and, and I make sure to surround myself with a lot of people that are a lot more successful than I am, you know, that, that forces me to be humble and, and, you know, other things, you know, I, I'm, I, I built, I'm, to me, humility is, is an important thing. Um, however, at the same point, you can be humble, but have massive amounts of internal self-confidence. You know, I mean, anything that I approach now today, and I've got some big moves, you know, that I'm making right now, making some of the biggest plays that I've ever made in my lifetime right now, which, you know, hopefully I'll be able to start talking about here in the next couple of months once everything's finalized, um, um, you know, with these, uh, uh, you know, like, dude, I don't have any worry or fear or self-doubt that these things are not going to succeed on a massive level. 
even though I'm now more chips on, on the table than I've ever been in my life from, you know, a focus standpoint, from an amount of effort standpoint that it's going to take to pull this off, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, if, if I went down this journey 10 years ago, I'd have been shit in my pants. Now today, like, it's like, dude, let's do this thing. I don't have those worries. I don't have those concerns. You know, um, now I'm still going to be strategic. You know, I'm still going to be smart with them. You know, I'm still going to be calculated with them. I, I'm still, you know, it's not like I, 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 you know, I'm jumping into doing things recklessly, you know, um, but I have so much more self-confidence, so much more self-worth, um, uh, uh, so much more confidence of my ability to overcome adversity of like, look, there's a lot of shit I don't know. And there's going to be a lot of problems that I have in the future and a lot of pain that comes up in the future. And then, you know, it, that's going to be true with all endeavors. Um, um, however, I know I've proven to myself that I'm committed to figuring out. I know that at this point in my life, I know that I'm not a quitter. I know that I'm, I'm, you know, can figure things out, that I'm resourceful, that I'm going to make it happen. If I put my mind to it, I'm going to be able to go out there and make it happen. And this is what will allow to yourself to transpire in your own life, you know, um, if and when and it, though, you know, you stop running from pain, you stop running from suffering, and you start utilizing these as these these you know best friends, these blessings that show up in our lives uh, to go out there and allow us to grow, expand, and continue leveling up. So anyway, I can keep rambling on this forever, but I hope that you guys found this helpful. I'll go ahead and wrap this up right now. Again, make sure to go check out gsdmode.com. A lot of other free resources. You know, uh, I've got my free masterclass taking place right now for any of you that are in real estate. Highly recommend that you jump on that. Um, it's a it's a 100% free, three to four hour, and depending on how long Q&A goes and so forth, it ranges from three to four hours of, of just in-depth strategies of how to go out there and pivot and shift during market shifts to ensure that your business continues to grow, scale, and thrive regardless of the marketplace. Anyway, I truly appreciate you guys watching this. Keep crushing it. Keep up all the amazing work, and I will see you next time. Peace.